in this episode of Ask Me Anything, I got a great question of what is my opinion, view, beliefs of the Graston certification? What's up, everybody? Dr. Matt Maggio here. And those of you that don't know me, I am the creator of The Peak Method and the founder of The Soft Tissue Revolution, where we teach self-employed massage therapists a new treatment system that focuses on working smarter, not harder, allowing them to easily double their income, all while working 50% less. So I like doing these Ask Me Anythings. And just so you know, in advance, these are my opinions. And sometimes opinions can offend people. If you find yourself getting triggered by my opinions or what I say, you might have a problem. I'm just looking at this through the lens of going on shit now, 11 years of experience taking every advanced course you could ever think of and really being able to dive through what's good, what's bad, what's worked for me, what's worked for other people. So if you find yourself being triggered, if I say something bad about something that you do, you might need to check that and realize that nobody can really make you feel any way you decide to feel that way. So just my trigger warning for that. I'm not going to get real triggered like today, but I talk about certifications in general. I've made these comments before that nobody really cares about how you do it or what you do. They just care that you can do it. I made a whole ask me anything about certifications and how to judge a certification and how to find one. I'll link it up right here if you're watching it on YouTube. Um, but at the end of the day, you are your own certification. Your results are your certification. But watch that video if you want a little more in-depth and help you go through a process of trying to figure out if you should take a certification or not, what the return on investment, all that stuff, blah, 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 all the good stuff. So what do I like about Graston? Well, it was pretty revolutionary when it came out. You know, it's going on, I think, like 30 years now when it came out. The idea of not using your hands and using an instrument to break down scar tissue allowed for a more effective, um, more long-lasting type of approach. And it was really groundbreaking when it came out because basically – since the beginning of manual therapy, most people have just been using their hands. And when you use your hands all the time, it puts a lot of wear and tear on your body, puts a lot of just wear and tear on your joints, your overall well-being. And you can only do so much. The instrument treatment allowed you to do a lot more, help more people. And that's why I really thought Graston, when it first came out, was revolutionary. They're the first place to actually be like, hey, this is awesome and you can do things to treat without just using your hands. You can use your brain. You can use your mind. I always say learning how to work smarter, not harder. So what I don't like about Graston, number one is just the tissue damage, you know, bruising. I call it collateral damage. You know, they're like, oh, well, bruising and swelling is normal. It's part of the healing process. And they really go in and beat up a lot of tissue to get to that dysfunctional tissue. And I see people all the time on social media, like posting them beating the living shit out of muscles and it's bruised and it's swollen and it's red. And they're like, yeah, doing good treatment. Like you ain't doing fucking good treatment. You're beating the shit out of the tissue. And there's a lot of collateral damage done across the board. The other problem I don't like about Graston is the whole, use it everywhere approach. I remember I was listening to one of my mentors a couple of years ago and he was teaching a course next door to the Graston seminar and he overheard them say, yeah, you can basically use the Graston tool anywhere. Yeah, you know, if someone's got a sinus problem, just get in there and rub or use it here, use it there, use it everywhere. Uh, a tool to fit everything. The problem with that is it can't be used everywhere and trying to have just that one thing, beating the living fuck out of the tissue can cause a lot of problems, but it isn't treatment. It isn't just one size fits all. So there's certain rules um, for using an instrument. I'm going to link that up on YouTube. I'll put it up right here. I'm trying to point to where it is because trying to figure out this social media stuff uh, where I went into a little more depth in detail about when to use an instrument, some rules for it, where I use it. But basically, I have certain rules for the instrument. And basically, the first thing is the tissue has to be less than an inch deep. It, no one can get any deeper with that. They can sit there and tell you they are and you're, you can put all your body weight and all your force in there. You're not getting more than an inch deep. Um, number two is the tissues kind of have to run parallel from where they go. Not a lot of like cross running because that really just helps with the, the lymphatic draining and all that and helps the tissue kind of 
heal up in a better way. Number three is there can't be a lot of nerves or blood vessels around there. That's when people really beat the shit out of certain things. I see this a lot in like the levators and near the accessory nerve where people beat the living piss out of that area and it gets really red, really inflamed. All they're doing is just jamming and, and just destroying the accessory nerve and creating a lot of damage with the blood vessels. Um, and the last thing is once what's called petechiae. Petechiae is like an inflammatory response. It's where little red dots form. That's when you know to stop with the treatment itself. But the video that I linked up will go in a little bit more depth on that. So for me, when do I use the instrument? I think I use it about 30% um, of the time in the body, which is a third of what I do, which is good. A third can take anytime I have a chance to use the instrument as opposed to using my hands. I always go for the instrument, but I don't use it everywhere. And as long as it follows those rules and that structure from where we're going, that's where I'm going to use it. So where do I see it the most? Uh, definitely in the spinal ligaments. Uh, I use it in the lumbar fascia, really good in the medial and lateral elbow, uh, in the hand, into the wrist, top layer of the quads. I like to use it on the knee capsule, uh, anterior compartment of the shin and the bottom of the foot. Those are really the areas where I use it the most and I really follow those rules. As soon as I start to see a little bit of redness or that petechiae, I know to stop because it is key that you get the right amount of treatment and not over treat and don't use it every fucking place in the body. If you're one of these people that you does that, ugh, I don't know what to tell you. So some take homes from this. Number one is don't be lazy and don't use it everywhere. Understand it is part of it, but it isn't everything. And following those rules and knowing that can make you give a better, more effective, long lasting and durable treatment instead of just beating the living piss out of it. Cause you gotta respect the tissue. People always think they need to just kick the shit out of stuff. And I see, I call them idiots. You're, you're idiots. They post shit on social media like, oh yeah, I got the piss kicked out of me. They're really doing something. Like you didn't do nothing except beat up a lot of healthy tissue and did a lot of collateral damage. Understand treatment is like a medication um, and you want to give the right amount. Many people, they, especially manual therapists, we, we look at treatment in two ways. Either it's going to do something or it's not going to do anything. We never think that we can over treat. If I gave you a pain pill, uh, it could be enough to be effective. But if I give you too many pain pills, I could actually kill you. Treatment is the same way, respecting the dosage, getting it just right. And lastly, this is more on the marketing and sales and branding thing. Be your own brand. As I say before, nobody gives a shit about how you do it or what you do. They just care that you can do it. They're not searching you out because you are a certain type of provider and you have a bunch of certificates and seminars under your belt. They want to know that you can explain what their problem is. You have the skills to fix it and then you can show them that it actually fix it. So that's my take on the Graston certification. Be totally open to any discussion that you might have on it. Some things that you've learned from Graston, some things good and bad from what you've seen from it, how you apply it into your clinic, to your practice and everything like that. Um, if you like the video, give it a comment, a like or share. If you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to keep making the videos and find yourself not being triggered from where you are. Uh, go grab our free training. I uh, really break down a lot of like the aspects of critical thinking, figuring out problems and getting on the path from being a service provider to a solutions provider. Uh, come take one of our courses uh, and come learn from me and really change your mind around the idea that you can solve problems quicker, faster, working smarter, not harder. And you can easily double your income and work 50% less, but the first step is making that choice to get that free training and changing your mind. I appreciate you guys for watching. And if you have any questions specifically you want me to cover, send me a message. Always here to help. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.